Today is Equal Pay Day. Equal Pay Day is observed every year in April. This is the day that a woman must work to to earn on average as much as a man earned on average in the, previ in the t only 12 months of the previous year. So a woman must work through April of 2010 in order to earn on average what a man earned in the 12 months of 2009. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, in 2009, the ratio of women's and men's median annual earnings reached almost 80.2 cents on the dollar for the full-time year-round full year workers. In Michigan, 59% of women have participated in the labor force but have earned only 72.4 cents on the dollar, so we're even behind the national average of women earning 80% of what men earn on average. It is far time to do away with this disparity that can be explained by nothing other than discrimination based on gender. This discrimination occurs both within occupations where women are likely to pay, be paid less than their male, male counterparts for doing the same work. Imagine if the women on this floor were to be paid 59% of what the men are paid. It would be obviously unfair and inequitable. The same is true in all other workplaces in the nation and in the state of Michigan. Inequity occurs also in pay between jobs of comparable worth that tend to be distinguished by the gender of people who perform them. For example, house cleaning versus yard work, food service workers versus custodians. We should get a, go, do away with these um, sex stereotyped um, disparities, uh, both in the type of jobs that are open to women and the amount that they're paid once they're in these occupations. These disparities affect all of us, and especially the single-headed household, the female single-woman-headed households, of which there are many here in the state of Michigan and across the country. A study put out by the American Association of University Women found that women right out of college working full-time already are earning 20% less than their male colleagues, even when they work in the same field. Three years after graduation, the gap widens. This despite the fact that females generally have higher GPAs, including in math and science. <clears throat> the research also shows that 10 years after graduation, college-educated men working full-time have more authority in the workplace than do their female counterparts. Men are more likely to be involved in hiring and firing, supervising others, and setting pay. Women who attend highly selective colleges earn less than men from either highly or moderately selected colleges and about the same as men from minimally selected colleges. Ten years after graduation, women are more likely than men to complete some graduate education. So, there are these numerous examples of discrimination in the workplace. I have introduced um, numerous times, including this session, Senate Bill 486, which has been sitting in committee without a hearing. I would urge the chair to take it up, and I ask that my remarks be that Senate Bill 486, which would address these disparities and prohibit discrimination in pay based on gender and other um, protected classes that are listed in the Elliot Larson Civil Rights Act. So I ask that my remarks be printed in the journal. Thank you, Mr. President.